see if it is recording. Okay, it is recording. So today I wanted to go into a couple of little things, of course, cropping images in design space. And you know that when you go into a lot of different programs, they have the crop tool, but design space tends not to have it. But we're going to go through and it's actually going to be easier to do your cropping in design space than most other programs, just to let you know a little bit ahead of time. So today's agenda, of course, um, I'm going to give an introduction to myself and about me and all kinds of different things. I'm going to talk a little bit about my Cricut Confidence program. Don't feel obligated. Um, in the long run that you have to spend all kinds of money in order to get training, but I would appreciate if you come into my training, but that's up entirely up to you. And then we're going to go into cropping images and I'm going to show you through four different ways that we're going to crop images and that's going to be the important part. And then of course I'll have some Q&A at the end and hopefully you will end up with some skills that you're going to be able to use once you get into design space and you have some photos that you're going to be able to take and crop or any other image that you can crop for yourself. So I want to welcome everybody to our class. We have uh, 60 people on right now and it is growing by the second. So welcome to the class. If you don't mind loading up Cricut Design Space, you can craft along with me or you can not open it and just listen and then go back to the replay to get all of the other information. So I have designed this training so that you can craft along and a number of you have taken a lot of trainings with me. I like to craft along. I try to explain it in the most simple ways to make it a lot easier for you so that you're able to do it back on your own. And the replay, generally we can get it edited on the same day and available to you the next day. I will try and get that done. Depends on the workload Karina has right now. I might just push it in raw so that you will have no edits on it, but you at least you'll be able to get the replay uh, once we finished with it. For those of you who have never taken a training from me before, I'm actually Dr. Beto. I was a university professor, corporate training professional. I worked in the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley, a company called Cisco Systems in the engineering department, but I was always developing training for them. I also was a university professor for business. And of course, why am I in crafting and teaching you all about this? Is because I've been crafting since I was a little kid, going all the way through. That is my passion and my love. I have retired from the corporate world. I've retired from academia. And now I get to teach the way I want to. And I get to play around with my crafting at the same time. So I've developed tons and tons of training programs. I was an instructional designer. So putting things together is the easy part and explaining it is even better because I've done everything from kindergarten all the way up to master's and PhD programs. So I've done the whole gamut, but my passion here is with you and teaching you how to make your crafts because DIY is where I really like to take it. And of course, I wanna be able to teach you some little skills that you can put together and create things of your own you have any questions as we go along, just put them inside the chat and I will try and glance over there and answer them as we go along. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about my Cricut Confidence program. I've been sending emails this week. This is our launch week. So this is part and parcel of it, but the training is free for everyone. Our program is all about taking the five steps to go from newbie to nailing it. We call it MAKER, just, just an acronym that we use. We start with your machine and mastering your machine, and then we go into all the different tools. We explain all kinds of things from uh, shapes to text to monograms and everything else that fits in between it. 
with, you know, and that's the tool part of it. And then we go into a lot of things like key concepts. So some design basics and getting a feel on making and creating different things. From there, we try to expand, we don't try to, we do expand your knowledge and dig into a bunch of file types and developing your own style. So you're creating your own thing. Yes, you can still bring things in, but we just show you how to make the changes to it so it's your own thing. And then, of course, the last part of it is rule design space so that you can pretty well do anything that you want within design space. Still needing to fill in a few gaps here and there by asking questions, but that is our whole program. That is Cricut Confidence and what it's all about. And Wendy, if you're on the call here, she took the course and... Of course, uh, she couldn't imagine the struggle she had had if she had not taken my course because there's so many little tips and tricks and things that you can do just to make things easier. And one of Wendy's big questions was a cut through or a kiss cut. What's the difference? So that was one of her big questions. And of course, we go through there. So with our Cricut Confidence, there's two programs. There's the Silver, which is study on your own and as you go. And I open up just this week our Gold course. And Gold is everything that's in Silver. Plus, I add every week you get a live session for four weeks. And we do some extra training on those live sessions. So if you're interested in knowing a little more, it's betsmakes.com slash cricket hyphen confidence. It'll take you to a page with all kinds of details. And so that is all there is about cricket confidence. I will talk a little more about it at the end of our training. But for now, I just wanted to give you an overview. Our big thing today is all about cropping images. So this is just a small example of a photo that I pulled off the web. And there was a couple of ways that we could crop it. We could crop a circle or we could crop a rectangle, but we're going to crop other shapes as well, just by using what's inside design space. So remember, just open up design space. If you have a photo of any kind, it's a JPEG or a PNG, that is perfect. Just upload it into design space and you can try some of the cropping techniques with what we're going to do. That is the easy way to do it. And of course, it can be anything. You can take a screenshot and do a cropping. You can do all kinds of things and we'll do all of that. And then part and parcel of cropping those images is all about what are the pieces I want to keep and use versus what do I want to get rid of? Or do I want to create a frame in the background? And that's a type of crop as well. And of course, the rest is magic. And of course, we want to go and create that magic inside of design space right now. So I'm just going to move over to design space. Now, I just need a little yes in the chat to see if you can see my design space. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And I want to make sure you'd be able to see it because we're going to play around a little bit in here and we're going to do a few things with cropping images. We're going to start with something pretty simple and then we'll work to something a little more complex. But the simple one is it's just so amazing the type of cropping you can do inside here. And we never tend to talk about the cropping. We always talk about all the other parts of it. So I'm just going to start a new project. And inside my two project, I'm just going to go to my upload. And I've uploaded a bunch of photos I found at Pexels. And I'll just type it in here what the link was. It was Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. Dot com. They have tons of free images. You can go there and pick one. If you want to use one for this particular project, you can pick anything you want. I've just uploaded a bunch. This one here with the birds, that was a screenshot of my screensaver. These, the rest of them were from Pixels. So I'm going to start with this little girl and the ball because that's going to be easy. I'm just going to add her to the canvas. Closed captioning, Phyllis, um, it will be in the recording. I am going, actually going to post 
the replay inside of our free hub and our membership hub because it automatically puts the closed captioning in place. That'll make it a lot easier. Okay, so let's just add this one to the canvas. I'm just gonna make her a little bigger so you can see what I'm doing. That's a nice picture. We could do a print and cut with it just as it is. But quite often we just want the little smile. Okay, we have to decide what we really want to keep. Do we just want a rectangle? So let's do a couple of things here. So obviously I'm going to shapes. Let's just pick on a rounded rectangle right now. Okay, hey, and I'm gonna change else. it from basic <laughs> cut to pen. This is the key here. Okay. Basic pet. Basic cut to pen. Oh, get over here. Okay, I just want to move you. There we go. Now I'm going to bring it over onto my design. I'm just going to click on unlock up here. So that's up here on the size, a little unlock. Then I'm going to decide what I want to keep. There we go. A little bit here. Okay. A little bit here. Maybe I'll bring some down here. So you can see I've got an outline now of what I want to crop just okay. this part. And I'm getting okay. rid of the edges on the outside. Now I can bring this picture back in because I've uploaded it. Right. So I'm not going to duplicate anything, but I am going to highlight both of them at this point. Someone speaking in the background, please mute. Okay, see if I can mute them. Is that better, Bonnie? Because I don't hear them, so. Okay, perfect. All right, so just to recap, what we did is I took a shape, which was the rounded square I, un I changed it from cut to pen, so I got an outline, and then I adjusted it over the part of the image that I wanted. So now I have selected both pieces, and it's as simple now as clicking on slice. Now, the background piece you can see here, I know it's showing wide, this background piece, all I'm going to do is delete it. I'm doing it in the layers panel just going to delete it. And of course the pen part up here, I am just going to delete it. And now we have a nice little cropped image that we can use. Now, as you can see, that's pretty simple. I did that with a rectangle and it's still saying, oh, it's too big. Well, that's fine. I can just take this and just shrink it. So it does a print then cut. So that is the very first simple way to do it. Any questions on this first part? Okay, I'm just gonna slide her over to the side because I don't wanna start a new canvas. Everyone okay so far? Just type yes. I just wanna know you're there. Perfect, okay. Let's bring in another image. This time I am going to bring in an image where I want to now crop it in reverse. Now you can say, what the heck, crop in reverse? So what I can do is I want to have some sort of pattern on the outside and I wanna cut out what's in the middle so that I have a frame to work with. So I'm gonna use this particular picture and it just happens to be something I found on the, I see someone's animating in here. So Tate, clear. Tate. Clear. Okay, we just just be careful when you're using annotate on the screen. I don't know who's got someone drawing on there, but just be careful with it, please. All right, let's go back here. And what we're going to do now is 
um, click on this one mm. and add it to the canvas. Yeah, um, is everybody else can hear me okay? Someone's typing in here, can't hear. I can hear you, okay. So it might be the sound settings on your computer. Okay, let's go back here now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a reverse here. So I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger so you get an idea of what I'm going to be doing here. I'm gonna take the same kind of idea, but I want to have a nice oval frame with this on the outside and a blank in the center. So it's pretty much the same. All right, so let's go to our shapes. This time I am going to pick on a circle. Same thing, I'm going from basic cut to pen. And then I'm gonna bring it in the center, but I am going to unlock it and just bring it down so I have a nice shape that I can use to put something in the center. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a frame. So what I'm gonna do is take both of these. I'm going to come up here to a line and click on center. I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to slice them. This time I'm going to click on the center and delete it and the center and delete it. And now I have a nice little picture frame. So once again, it's going to complain up here because it's too big. So we can just shrink it down to what we want. So that is called reverse cropping. Any questions on that? No, okay, we're good. We have two things that we've done so far. So we've got this one and this one. So let's bring in one more image. So let's go to our uploads and we can decide exactly what we want to do. Let's try something a little more complex. Let's go for our sunflowers here and see what we can do here. Just gonna add it to the canvas. Now this one's going to create a few more issues when you do it, but say we just wanted this one little item right here. This is going to be pretty simple. Going up here to my shapes, I'm going to pick on my circle. I'm going to change it from basic cut to pen. And then I'm going to bring it over top. And this time I'm not going to change any of the settings. This is a little hard to see. Let me just change the color so maybe we can see it a little better. Maybe if I make it a nice orange. Yeah, now I can see my circle. And this one, you're going to have to just move things around so you eyeball it the way you want it. That doesn't look quite in the center the way I want it. Maybe a little bit too big. Just make it a little smaller. That looks pretty good. Okay, so all we need to do on here is highlight them both again and click on slice. So now I've got rid of my circle. I'm just going to delete it. I have my sunflower that I want and I can get rid of the background. You have to see it again. Okay. We are going to do some more anyway. So let's grab another one from upload. And let's do another circle one. I've got a nice dog here. Add it to the canvas. Can you show the highlight? Okay, let's make our dog bigger. We're gonna do another one just like this one. All right, so we need that circle because we just want the face of the dog. So let's go to our shapes. 
I just pick on a circle. I'm not using fancy shapes here right now. I'm going to change the basic cut to a pen. Now this black is going to be hard to see on here. So then on the operation where it's got the black here, I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to pick on say orange peel so that I can see that circle a little better. And then I can just put the face of the dog inside here. Move it just a little bit. I'm just moving it around just a small bit. Can you see the circle and the background right now? Just put a yes if you can see both. I want to make sure you can see it. I know it's not that thick. Okay, great. All right, once again, just highlight both and click on slice. I'm going to get rid of this background. I'm going to get rid of my circle. And now I have a nice little cropped image of the dog. As you can see, you can play around with any of the shapes and do the cropping just by using different things. And of course, this one's a reverse one where you want to keep the background and put something different. You could actually put the dog inside here. You know, there's, there's so many different combinations. Now, I'm going to use slice a little bit differently. This is going to be a cropping, but it's going to be something just slightly different when we go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go back to my upload. You can pick on images here as well and pick anything that you want. I'm going to pick on this butterfly one. I'm going to add it to the canvas. Remember, these ones I just got at Pexels. That was Pexels.com. I'll type it back in here one more time, just in case you have P-E-X-E-L-S.com. You can go there and get any of these images, and that's where I pick these up. Now, this would be a nice one for doing a crop or something a little different, uh, different shape, different size. So you can pick on all kinds of different shapes. If I go to the shapes here, there's just so many other ways that I can crop and put them in. There's uh, tags, there's different size crops. There's all kinds of different things. I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm going to monogram. Now, if you have access, you can see the monogram. I'm just going to type in an S here just so I can get some of the shapes. As you can see, there are some different shapes of frames that you can use. And this is the frame I want to use. All I did was go to monogram. I typed in any letter. And then I'm just looking at what's available for a shape here, because we're going to make some adjustments. If I go to elegant, will it give me the same ones, handwritten, same ones, vintage, same ones. So you can still see that you only have these ones available. What I want is this shape. Now there are some shapes in there. I'm just going to add it to the canvas. And I just want you to start thinking about things a little differently here. I'm going to grab this. I come over to my layers panel. You see I've got the basic cut and I've got the letter. So I'm just going to click on the letter and I am going to delete it. Mm. Now I have a different kind of frame and a different kind of crop that I can use. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. I'm just going to frame it around. See it come off part of that flower. Let's say that looks pretty good and even. Can you show one using a cricket image? Yes, I will. I will do that next. Okay, so let me just grab these two and let's slice them. Now this is going to show a little bit different. We have the frame, which I'm going to delete. We have another frame that we can use for anything else we want. I'm going to delete it. But these pieces are connected because of the way that I did that. So what I want to do is cut out the piece in the center because that is the one that I want. So this is a type of cropping. So I'm going back to my shapes, going back to my square, from basic cut to pen. And then I am going to bring it so it lines up. 
It's just going to line up slightly, so I'm not quite touching. I have to watch how it's touching the edge here. Okay, and then I'm going to bring it down. What I'm doing is I'm going to be cutting slightly off the top and the bottom with the crop. So these are like crop lines. I just want to make sure they're not too far on the outside edge. I don't want to give myself any extra work if I don't have it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to highlight both these pieces and slice them. Now what I have is the frame I can get rid of. I have another piece I can get rid of. I have my piece in the middle that I want and the rest of this can say goodbye. So that was another little shape. Do you have to use a monogram to use this frame? No, you can create your own frame that way. I just that monogram had that shape. And if I take a look at shapes, if you have access, I'm not too sure if they have a shape like that. Oh, there's one that's similar right here. You could use this shape right here instead of the one I used out of the monogram. So that's another way. Now, someone wanted me to show one using an image right here from Cricut. So let's go for, let's go floor, flower. See what kind of images we have for a flower. If we have nice images. Most of them seem to be, they're okay. I don't want to use those for cropping. So we will take a look at a, uh, how about uh, forest? See what we've got for the forest. Which should be interesting. There's some interesting ones in the forest. So let me just grab this camping one right here. This is just as an example. Bring in the camping one. Now, an easy example here is you wanted to just cut out part of these trees and you didn't want anything else or you wanted just the tent in a circle or maybe just the campfire. So let's just take this campfire as an example. I'm going to come up here to a shape. This time I'm going to pick on the circle. I find the circle easier to use and adjust than trying to use an oval that's already there because I like to come up here and unlock it. And what I can do is just cover over exactly the pieces I want. So if I wanted just the campfire like that, in this case, because I can't remember where it came from, I am going to duplicate the background and just take it out of the way in case I need it again. Now I have the campfire. I'm going to take those two pieces and I'm simply going to slice them. Now I can get rid of this background piece that I don't want. I can get rid of that shape. And I've got just the campfire and it let me get rid of this piece as well. So now we have this cute little piece coming off something that was inside and that's just that piece of it. So you could do something very similar to this. So I've given you several different ways and they can all be print then cut. Our summer campsite here, yes, it's too big, we know. Um, but you know, there's just all kinds of different ones. This is one using a Cricut image. This is a sunflower out of a field. It's a little girl with their soccer ball that we took from an image I got from Pexels. This is a little bit different cropping shape. And then of course we had our dog and then we had a reverse frame. So any questions? I know it's a lot and we've done quite a bit here. And it's just nice to go through and know that the slice tool is very, very, very similar to a crop tool, except you can do a lot more with cropping it that way. I like the reverse one sometimes because what if you wanted to put someone's face in where the camping is? You can actually cut a hole in the middle and then put their face in the center. And of course, another easy way, let me just take this uh, dog and I'm going to arrange and bring him to the front. For example, I could put him over here 
as a camping, highlight both of them together, and then of course flatten them, and that would work. Assuming you can save these to your own library. Yes, of course. You. So we can take all of this. I'm going to save it. Um, I would just save it as cropped images, give it a name. And then of course you can have a collection. For me, it's probably my experiments. I've also got templates to YouTube ideas, templates. So maybe I put it as a template as well and just save them. And then I can get back to them at any time. The best part about this is you can have all kinds of your images cropped on one canvas. And then when you go to use it, if you come up here to file, you can do a new window, which would open up a new design space, come back to here, just click on it, control C to copy. So you can edit or go up to edit and copy it and then paste it in the new window. Is there any way to outline a shape and then use the outline to cut out portion of the image that you want to use? Of course. Okay, so let me see. Okay, we want to outline a shape and then use it to cut out a portion. So, so we could use any of these with something else in the background and select both of those together and just hit slice and then put the other part in. Did you say that the corners on the frame will be cut out? These corners, are you talking about these ones, Ellie? Because you can make any kind of frame that you want or here you can cut out the corners on the frame as well. I want to do one more thing with this particular one that we did just to give you an idea. I'm just going to highlight all of these. I am going to group them and then I'm just going to hide them for a second with a butterfly. Okay, let me just hide, hide this one. Let's uh, go to my uploads and let's bring in that butterfly again. So basically we could come up with, I'm going back to that monogram shape. I will just add it to the canvas. Whoa, made it too big. So I could actually put it on the outside edge like this. This is something a little extra so we don't have to do an extra step. Going up to this basic cut and delete it. Now I can take both of these and slice them. Now I've got these pieces that you'll see that are a little extra. So all I have to do is cut out those outside edges. And I think that's what you were referring to. Just get rid of this. So now I have a frame like this that I could put the butterfly back in if I wanted to. I'm just trying to make sure I'm answering your question correctly. So now what I would do if I just want this piece to go back in, but I want it a little smaller, this is, this is something you could do. The shapes, just pick on our square. Actually, I'm gonna go a rounded square this time. And I'm just gonna cut this out a little bit smaller. Now, I know I haven't changed it to pen yet, but I just wanna make sure I'm not going over the edges. Okay, from basic cut, and to pen, and that's just so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's just grab these two and slice them. It's the only piece, I don't want that piece. I don't want that piece. I want that one, and I don't want that one. Now I've cut out a little bit, so I can actually fit it back in there, or I can just shrink it a little bit. and just put it back in this way and center them both. So you have a really unique design that way. So let me go to align and center. Then I can group those together or attach them. And then you have a very unique design. Are you changing to pen? Is that necessary? It's not necessary, but that's the look you wanted to get. Okay. 
The reason I change it to a pen, let me just show you one little thing here. And let's go back to our upload. And let's pick the owl this time. This, this is the reason I change it. Okay, we're going to shapes and um, let's just pick that circle again. I can bring it down and over. And I know it's around there somehow, but I find it far more accurate if I go to pen because then I can see exactly what it is and adjust it properly for because I can see the image below. If I just put the circle over top, I'm not 100% sure what's going down in behind it. And to me, that's an important part of it is knowing what's behind. Because if I just made this a basic cut, I'm adjusting it, but I can't see exactly what's going on in behind it. It makes it a little tougher. There's no reason for you to have to do it if you don't want to. Let's just put it together and slice it because now I know exactly what owl I'm going to get. The rest is gone. Okay. I've never done this on Cricut, but I understand how. My question is probably dumb, but do you want, do you print this on Cricut or what? Okay, so now, for this one, this is my, it says it's too big, but I would have to just make it a bit smaller. I would just print it. And then of course, if you want to flatten this image or put something in behind, it will print and then bring it back to your Cricut and it will cut the outline. So that's one way to do it. So I always, you know, do the print then cut from this. Now, if you want to use this and just print it out and have it on an eight and a half by 11, for example, there's one little trick I have for that that might help. This little square here is going to turn off my grid lines so I can see it with the white in behind. What I do is I just take a screenshot. You'll see it dimmed. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this image. And then what I can do is then go into another program and I can paste it. Now you paste it and save it as an image all by itself. And I'm not going to save this. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now. What I did is I took a screenshot, get rid of this thing. So if I go to my upload now, and I can use this differently, I'm going to upload an image. I'm going to browse for it. And I'm going to open it. It's going to come in as complex. And then I can get rid of that behind it. Now it's a simple image. And then I can apply and continue. I'm left the white in behind and then print then cut image and upload it. When I click on it, I can add it to the canvas. And there we have the same image, but this time I left the white in behind. And that's one oh. way that you can do a print then cut and save it for yourself. And until they, um, decide that you know you're going to be able to save it for yourself that's the simple way to do it Ooh. using the pen is a great tip do doing alignment you have solved problem thank you me too same for me okay got it can this be done on the cricket joy you can do as long as it fits in with your cricket joy for the width there's no problem yes there will be a replay all right, I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint slides now. So let me just go back over here. So basically, you've learned, you know, how to push this in a circle, a square, and then I showed you something a little more complicated. But I'll tell you, when I crop an illustrator, it is not as versatile as it is cropping in design space. And when I found that out, I was able to make much better croppings for things I want to put on cards or surfaces. 
just think of it, you could actually do sublimation using the print and cut using the sublimation, sublimation, sorry. So I hope you've enjoyed the magic with it. And I just want to mention one more thing, our program. And of course, the whole idea is that you learn from me all the little tips and tricks and be able to put the whole thing together. And of course, it's our five-step process. I just call it maker. So you can master any of the creations and design techniques. Now, I know, Sheila, you've taken courses with me. So this is just an explanation of that whole process. It's the machine. It's all the tools. It's the key concepts. It's expanding your knowledge. And it's ruling design space. And that's the big key behind it. And of course, everybody wonders how much it's going to cost. Our Cricut Confidence Silver is 297 our gold is 347 and of course, with the gold, we have the live sessions. And Sheila, you've taken courses with me before. And this is a quote from her, over-delivered on lesson content. And that's exactly what I hope I've done for you today, because that's the most important part. If you're interested in taking my course, this is the link. It's betsmakes.com, cricket hyphen confidence. And of course, if you have any other questions, now's the time to ask. I am going to stop our recording right now.